so um, biology is a pretty complex um, it's a pretty complex subject and in fact the real advantage of using mathematics in, in biology is to try and make sense of what we currently have is fairly uh, inadequate in terms of an understanding of basic life processes so what mathematics then enables us to do or to enable us to do is to put together the simple rules of these life processes and that's the real advantage and the interest that many of us who are biologists have in mathematics and incorporating mathematics into our, our science. Sure, so I'm my primary interest is in the area of infectious diseases. And what I study is how bacteria or pretty much any pathogen causes disease. What are the molecular mechanisms that are associated that make that organism cause disease? And then also the associated host response, so a human, for instance, how a human would respond to, to infection. And in doing so, I've been for many, many years applying genomics-based approaches to try and answer those questions and hoping to use those approaches to develop better ways to intervene, um, i.e. good diagnostic tests, good vaccines, good therapeutics. And in fact, what we early on discovered is, um, relatively early on, in fact, is that genomics is enabled um, in, in, in great um, uh, form by the way that uh, mathematics uh, has allowed us to understand the various um, uh, transcriptional networks that are present, the genes that are present, how they interact, and put together a framework, a conceptual framework, if you will, of how an organism lives and interacts with its environment. In this case, we're interested in the host. And so using these uh, mathematical models and various mathematical models in terms of how uh, these cells grow and, and behave in their, in their environments, we've been able to identify particular genes um, that are important for survival. We've used those genes both as diagnostic targets as well as incorporated them into vaccines. And that's just one example using genomics-based approaches. Um, Another example actually is a very good one associated with this workshop that we're here at at Nimbus, and, and this is to do with Yoni's disease, a project I've been associated with for the past decade or so, where we're using, actually quite a few of my colleagues are using mathematical models to understand uh, transmission dynamics, how particular strains um, of this uh, very nasty organism uh, that causes uh, disease in a vast majority of U.S. dairy herds uh, flows in and out of um, herds. And so since so many animals are infected, um, there's no good way to uh, develop uh, intervention strategies without understanding the basic transmission dynamics. Where do you spend most of your money and effort on? And that's what these mathematical models are, are hopefully helping us inform, both from a basic understanding of disease process, epidemiology, as well as uh, a very practical intervention step in, in how we can control this disease in the future. Hopefully make our animals um, healthier, humans healthier, and, and ensure a safe food supply. So, you know, I think I'm, I'm a biologist. I'm actually more uh, interested, uh, much more interested in the, in the biological end of things. But it's become quite apparent that, that mathematics has informed many, many different parts of biology and, and um, you know, at different scales. Uh, so, for example, just folding of proteins. Um, we knew so, so little about it in terms of putting those uh, particular rules together, if you will. Um, and now we know so much more about it because of the mathematical models and frameworks that have been developed uh, for that the functioning of enzymes, the interaction of various uh, genes and regulatory networks within cells, um, to even a larger uh, scale, for instance, putting together organs, um, how they function in a whole organism, a plant or an animal. Uh, then you can go across to large scales, population scales. And, and mathematics really has in helped us inform, at least from a modeling standpoint, to understand those very basic processes that, that govern life itself. And, and that really, I think, is the beauty of, of, of math, that pure ability to get that pure science and some basic fundamental rules that are widely applicable. Biology, as I think I started mentioning, is a pretty crazy chaotic science. There's a lot of fuzzy stuff going on there. And so to have these clearly synthesized rules is wonderful.
Right. Um, so, um, you know, uh, Einstein said, um, uh, in, in uh, probably not, I'm not quoting him exactly, but um, he basically said that most of the fundamental ideas um, uh, in, in science and in life are simple. And um, I think it was uh, Bronowski who sort of added uh, that when uh, you ask simple questions and you get simple answers and you hear God speak. Um, biology is complicated. To find those essential simple rules that govern life processes is I in a way the simplest way I can explain mathematics can contribute to biology and to the rest of science. And that in itself is so wonderful and so powerful. And that really is what attracts people like us who are biologists and by no way, shape, or form uh, mathematics um, have, have that skill set. Um, it attracts us so much to this discipline. So that's why we're here.